uh, to the point that it moves at snail speed from all the accumulated micro hits. Not sure if maybe there's a max cutoff to prevent it from completely stopping, but I've not encountered a boss that could survive the onslaught for more than a few seconds. So now, I'll just like four Spitfire would probably be really fun. Right. I'm just like, oh my god, I I kind of want to do this, but I would definitely make sure if I were to ever do this, like ever, I'd be with like completely separate accounts. And I would never put anything that I got ever on like the auction house. Right. It would be completely distant from everyone. It's just, you know, there's no way I'm gonna be doing anything that would uh, mess with people that way. But God, I just wanna see that stuff in action. Same here. Sounds really cool. Like I said, it's technically not against the rules. Yeah. Apparently, um, WoW actually allows multi-boxing, which makes sense because of subscriptions. Um, but it doesn't allow botting. And obviously, you know, botting's different. It's automated. Right. <clears throat> Someone mentioned, I saw four creators walking around in town like this. And I'm just like, oh god, no. And someone said, uh... You can't detect it, and you can't stop it. You get split drops in dungeons, and you still have to fund all these characters in the exact same way, too. Or at the very least, you have to make sure your attack speed and cast speed and uh, the type of weapon you use are the same. Oh my god, uh, friggin' Bludgeon Masters. Bap, 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 bounce, 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 bounce. Oh my god, they all do backstep cutter. Just <laughs> boom. No, I'm just thinking of Secret Slayer, just infinitely looping and just bashing constantly with all of them. That would be great. Set, set it up so it's very slightly delayed, so it's just like a wave of sticks. <laughs> I love all the combo attacks I'm able to do on this stage. It's a stage that really shows them off. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh. Too slow. Too slow. Wow. They really are long. Wow, okay. Oh, Laser stick every mech. That, so that translates to? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what that translates to. This game goes impossible. Oh god, why? That's why you never say things like impossible. Yeah. Because that guy blew up. He thought it was impossible. Cool. But he didn't know that it was optical. So Erko was possible. This is very true. Oh right, I forgot. Great Zeo doesn't have a combo attack. Eh, whoop. Well, he does just kind of levitate in the air and nuke everything. Yeah. Don't hit the cockpit, even though it's an AI unit and ergo no one's in, you know, danger of dying. Whatever. No, well, that is another way of doing it, Skeeth. I don't blame you for that. Alright, let's show off Alpon. His Argon Sword. Aw, oh, the Moon Knight's theme. Here we go.
That barely scratched me. These are all just due to have gone insane. Okay. Yep. Okay, then. Push for me. Yeah, they're even talking. <laughs> well, that explains that question, though. No. I mean, not really. No, they don't. I guess I'll just... Boss Borat. Uh... Okay. Great Zio. I'm gonna put you right here. And you can just take out this guy, because he's sitting there all by himself. Well, actually, no, he's not. He's got a dude next to him, but, you know, I don't care. Why are they listening to Gulan? Well, they probably went insane, too. I wouldn't doubt it. How you would check after something like that. They're not huffing the bars of line. Mm. Well, that is true. Mm. Maybe they're just really dedicated. They all seem really determined to take on Great Zeo like they got something to prove. So, you know, if that's their thing. Great Zeo just like, ah. 
Oh! Masato's just like, really? Come on now. Masaki might enjoy this. I'm just bored. <laughs> right. Absolutely nothing. Fun, fun. Let's see what Boss Borat can do. Blow up? Nah. Well, he, he can't. Can he can only do that if Boss is piloting him. Really? Yep. And because Boss, I have crazy. Tetsuya as the pilot, self destruct is not an option. What does Tetsuya get? Nothing. That's a shame. Actually, no, we have. We have. He did. He used that at the beginning thing when he showed up. So, uh, we just. You know, you must really have something against Great Zio. He's pink, scary, and pink. <laughs> He's not pink. No. But Sheena would like that. But sometimes a really thin layer of, uh, you know, enemy blood can sometimes get a little pink. Yeah, true. Blood. Yes. I'll, I'll blast you out of the sky with my sword! Oh. Oh, yeah. Here, I got a better one. This knife. This is delicious. Borat, uh, heal up Great Zio for a little. You know, Borat is actually impressive when you apply freak logic. Boss built the Borat out of the trash and it works. And with and it moves with better accuracy than the Mazins. Yeah? Yeah. You say, the boss is rather impressive because of that. That's what I say. <laughs> the Borat is neat. Yeah, but it's boss who built it, right? Yeah. And he made that work. That's the impressive part. It was his, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> it was his mech, Mr. Krabs. He was number one. He smelled more like number two, though. <laughs> oh, Ouch indeed. Alright, so. But it's okay. We're gonna Every have to skip a turn here, so let's hit the. Uh, let's hit the boss with some dragon fire real quick. Be like, hey, what's up? It's like, yo. Did you light on fire? Just like, why don't you do this? I 
was wrong. But I'll just kill a butler. What's that? So we should gather everyone around each other. So the dumb one over here. I forgot you had a map attack. I'm gonna put Toya front and center. Alvon, you can be right next to him. Uh. Can't read. Uh. Um. Huh. It's there. One thing I'm looking at is um, good microphones for people that want to do like uh, like voice work at all. One that uh, uh, I remember a lot of people recommend the uh, like I think it's called the Blue Snowball. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. But one that um, is like really good, but it's a bit more expensive than the Blue Snowball is the uh, Blue Yeti. Ah, oh, heard of that too. The, um, the Yeti, if I wanted to get it, um, let's see if I can figure out the, uh, the price range on the Blue Yeti really quick, because it's not on the site. Like, looking on, uh, Amazon right now, looking at the standard Blue Yeti, um, is about 130 yeah. That seems a little high, because um, one thing I'm looking at said that they can be as low as 100, which, you know, it's a lot, but still. Super Robo Fanboy Lelouch. That would be interesting. Ooh. 
would certainly make for a more interesting character. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Akito, you can do it! One thing that's really um, nice about like the uh, Yeti mics, is, well, really any mic that has a setting, a lot of uh, blues, a lot of blue mics have this setting. Um, cardioid recording, which is basically it only records directly in front of it. Oh, nice. Which, um, okay, you know how, like, uh, when you guys do the, like, you do the, um, wow, I'm blanking, the Tales of Destiny stream? You could have it point toward you guys and only record your voice and not the TV. Nice. So you would be able to do voice and the game at the same time without any audio bleed. That's awesome. There would be a little bit, uh, probably. I'm, I'm just assuming there could be none at all. Um, but just because, you know, sound bounces. It. But it'll probably recognize sound coming from one direction, you know, ignore it. Um, but it would be so reduced that you wouldn't even pick it up behind the stream. Sweet. So, yeah. Things are useful. Might have to look into that in the future. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Guitar Center. That's right. I think I went there before and they had a bunch of neat microphones. Um, their best seller is the friggin' blue snowball for the course of this. Blue Yeti. Why is the blue the Yeti Pro like 250? Okay, a blue Yeti is 130. Blue Yeti with the recording with like recording software and everything is like 150. Oh, boss. Boss, why? You can do better than that. <laughs> it did nothing to boss Porat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know what? Man of action. <laughs> it just grabs him. Come here. Let me show you how a real man fights. Yep. Tetsuya is still confused to how boss part actually functions. Well, I think everybody except for bosses. Like, did I tell you how um, boss Parade is able to fly? How? Um, like, it's not replicated in the games, but in Mazinger Z proper. Bospora is able to fly by literally just taking a giant tube and inflating it around a place. How? <laughs> what do you mean, how? Because hmm. he floats. I guess so. I mean, what more do you need? Hmm. Apparently, um, according to, uh, a like a voiceover slash voice actor guy, uh -huh. um, his name is, uh, D uh Dave Corboisier, I think it's pronounced. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. But he was like, oh, you know, I used to have a snowball when they first came out, and it was nice. And I got all my investment back when I sold it again. Definitely likes blue mics. So. He 
yeah, Aphrodite sucks across the board. Like, there, yeah. There, there's no, there's no saving that. <laughs> and even its upgrades, quote unquote, suck. Final boss is probably the easiest boss in this game. Same. Yeah. Well, oh, apparently everyone is saying uh, buy a blue Yeti. The snowball's great, but the Yeti's a better investment. I'll have to look into that later in life. Unfortunately, if I ever get that much money, I'll probably just buy an Elgato. Oh yeah. You're more focused on, um, like, streaming things, but I would use it, uh... Well, one, to help the fact that whenever I stream things, there's always, like, a hissing noise background, that's why. Yeah. Uh, plus, I come off as bassy. Um, but the main thing is is the fact that uh, it'll be real nice to practice voice acting with a microphone that's pretty alright. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, chances are what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up I'm going to move out to a place where I can, you know, actually practice, get a good microphone, and start really working on it. Yeah. It'll be fun too. Like fixing a carburetor. Follow your dreams. No matter how stupid they might be. <laughs> Feelings, emotions, ew. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, that's just because boss is awesome, Ski. I mean, come on now. No! This cannot be! Uh... <laughs> Fucking ass. Oh, gee, oh, yeah, I get it now. Oh, I gotta be all dramatic because it's Symphony of the Fucking Night. Uh. <laughs> Hydro Storm! So, let's see Hydro Storm! Hydro Storm! <laughs> Oh, Hydro Storm! You know what? Fine. I'm just gonna lay here and die. Do whatever. I don't care. Oh yeah, oh, gee, all right, fine. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Hydro ah. Storm! Fucking ass. <laughs> well, here I am in the darkness again. Hey there, Dracula. Shut the fuck up, werewolf. Okay, we weren't doing X-Death, but you know what, Skeet? Fair enough. Tasty arrow! Also turtles. Something about turtles. Turtle! Tur turtle! Double 
I really hope the next Dissidia comes to this point. Me too. I wonder if they're gonna try and balance assists or if they're just gonna flat out remove them. You know, it'd be cool if they balanced them, but I really wouldn't mind if they removed them. I can understand it. They, they, yeah, they were neat, but yeah. Like, if they were moved, moved, then it'd just be like, oh, oh well, Duodecim is the, uh, it's the only one that has them. Yeah. Oh well. Pretty much. The most broken mechanic in the game is gone. <laughs> <sighs> the sad thing is, um, Duodecim, if Duodecim did not have assists at all, I actually think it'd be a better game. And I really like Duodecim. I'm not saying it's bad at all. It's better than the first game, I think. But I think assists held it back simply because of how broken they were. I like how uh, I don't. Uh, there's this one guy who used to run this one type of tournament that I can't remember uh, the name of it. I don't even know if it's still being run. But um, basically, what he did is he set up a custom rule to where okay, every each combatant has their assist bar full at the start of the match. But as soon as you use two assists, you're done. You can't use any more. He actually had the rules where it was impossible for you to gain assist gauge. So. Which is nice. Um, like, really nice. But still, a decent player can do so much damage with just those two assists. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I get that, you know, being able to do that much damage with two assists, no matter how broken the assists are, is skillful. I'm not saying it's not. It's just that that's ridiculous. The yeah. sister just broken, yeah, and it yeah. sucks because they're a nice, they're a nice concept. But... Oh god, the balance, and it's something that's really hard to, you know, keep balanced and keep fun. You know, so it's just kind of, kind of poopy butts. Counter. Close to frame. Indeed. Super hole. I am so glad the Blade Master Awakening Super Holes now. Yeah. It's very nice. Like, we've needed that for the longest fucking time. They're <laughs> super armor. <laughs> God damn. Just walk right out laugh at you. Pretty much. Oh, the level 99 for old Chaos Bus, Boss Fight Troll? Oh, yeah. Where if you tell fucking Mog at the beginning of the game that you're tough shit. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's actually possible to win that fight if you're really good. I think it actually does do something, but nothing important. Yeah. They just kind of go, oh, hey, you won. Like, that's about it. Sticking with Bonesacoon right up to the end. Well, why wouldn't I? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, Bonesacoon too good. 
Although I it's imagine, fantastic. I imagine for the final that. run, I'll have to be forced to use Arbalest to make it a little bit easier on myself. Uh, probably. Because Arbalest is really good. Probably the best real Robo unit in this game. I wouldn't doubt it. Wow, he's almost out of energy. That's surprising. He must be using a lot of organ cloud barrier. Yeah, kind of is. I actually really like that. As for the murder everyone so they don't die by mannequin, I saw the logic in the plan. Basically they were just gonna wait it out till the next cycle because really what's the threat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She really is. Alright, he's low enough to where we can do our super special amazing dynamic kill on him. Let's do it. Alvon, you're gonna do the honors. Love! Who do you love, Alvon? My sword! At this particular moment in time, I don't believe I have a healthier or more deeply felt respect for any object in the universe than this here sword. Yep.
Bye bye. Pow. And that's that. Fun oh, 66. Fun. Oh, pour it all into melee. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> I love how all the mooks are like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> Just, mm. no. Did that sucker? <laughs> Moo, play tall. I like to imagine Moo just taps on the shoulder. He's like, "I'm right here, dude." Like, <laughs> <laughs> guy, our battle's over at last. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> it's like I know it sucks, right? why Alvan must jump into action. Yep. Over the course of the game, because uh, originally Grantide was uh, Toya's dad back uh, his dad's memories have been slowly been feeding into him through the system. Freaky. Yeah, I know, right? It's like a lot less insane version of the uh, Masaki thing. And you know, not everyone is Masaki. Right. Or rather, Tai's dad. Everyone's talking again to you. It's just like, God, slow down. I can't hear any of you. Jesus. <laughs> Skeet's like, after the victory, evil just comes down. He's like, hey, Blade, let's celebrate with some Doritos. Blade's just like, nah, man. Nah. D I know the game you're playing. I will not partake in your disgusting Pringle chips. Oh, well, more for me. And he, it's actually Doritos in there. God damn it. Um, I mean, I know they're cool ranch and all, but personally, I prefer that flavor. Uh, I don't know about you. He, he just, like, stands up, goes to walk away, and then just, like, his entire body just quits existence, and he turns to Jello, or Tang, really. <laughs> Everyone hugs and turns into Tang. No, <laughs> only Blade <laughs> quits. <laughs> he just takes one step. Step and just sploosh. <laughs> and then he sets off the third impact. Uh, <laughs> well, he does have enough rage. Yeah. Why don't you just get friggin' Great Zio in here? I know, right? ECS can handle it. The ECS won't even break a sweat. For one, it can't, but if it could, it wouldn't.
Yep, and we leave Alvon to die. <laughs> Toya oh, Zelda Shuin. And they talk so much that the whole thing blows up. <laughs> Oops. All you people do is talk! self-aware uh, the uh, Boo Visco Tanks fight was. Yeah. We survived! Alvon is fucking dead. Wow. What a downer. You know, why didn't we do that again? We could have saved Alvon. We've proven that that fucking worked. Like... <laughs> uh, Act in the UEF-8. Torse exhausted following the second ballad. How can do those seeking peace with the plants on a very time to propose a ceasefire soon enough besides find themselves in the same table to come gold peace. Events leading up to the talk saw the dissolution of the reclaimers and the formation of peace tree and confederation. Long last the period that would eventually be known as the Earth Sphere's first crisis came to an end. The second crisis, Paul. That was some shit. <laughs> the near simultaneous deaths of Patrick Zala. Azrael and other military extremists coincide with rumors of the formation of an army that included the Fine Faction, the former UEFA rival army, and Nurgle's Prophet Worship. Even with countless researchers and historians attempting to fit the pieces together, it will likely be quite some time before judgment is passed on this period of history. Title drop. Indeed. Consider also the bloodless coup of the Jovian forces, Blue Cosmos has returned the shadows and the people's revolution of the Mosonian homeworld. While the possibility exists that these events will one day lead to yet more conflict, for now they serve as a reminder of humanity's narrow escape from obliteration and of the hard part of the peace drink, no matter how fleeting. One last matter to consider. Three days after the engagement at Jock and Dew, scientific organizations worldwide detected what appeared to be a large scale earthquake on the moon. Considering the heteroform possibility of volcanic activity on, uh, activity on the lunar surface, the astronomical community soon found itself in a heated debate over the cause of the phenomenon. As of this moment, the exact cause remains unclear. Albon blew up. Indeed. And slowly but surely, time flowed ever onward. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to Albon's funeral now. Neat. Not neat. He shouldn't have died in the first place. Well, at least you're going to his funeral and not just pretending nothing happened. Right. I think, and like all the other endings, it's just like, like oh, Avon's dead, whatever. Toy actually gives a shit. Alvina kind of didn't. I think Calvina actually had more of a reason to care. Well. You know, were. Yeah. Who, who Durandal would make the anti Toya? No idea. I'm too cool for blazers. <laughs> and now we have a kid. <laughs> Not yet. Now they do. It's weird. <laughs> Get somewhere safe and don't move. Hey, look, someone actually realized what was going on. Yeah. He's basically like, dude, tie, learn to tie a tie. Or at least get clip-ons. 
No one will know. <laughs> and that's the ending of the Festenia route for Toya. Aw, oh, man. That was a long time going. Fun, fun. Oh, gosh. So here's an interesting little post I saw. It's on a, a Reddit thread about uh, you know asking longtime teachers what things they've noticed about um, like older like like what do they notice about uh, students today and how's it different from students until like five, ten, twenty years ago? Mm -hmm. One interesting. I'll give you one that seems counterintuitive. For context, I started teaching the IB curriculum in 2004. It's a demanding curriculum which attracts above average students. Generally speaking, I've found my students in the last few years to be much less tech savvy than those from the mid-2000s. They are much lo less able to find good, good sources through web searching and, are, and seem to have a much hazier understanding of IT in general. This isn't universal, of course, just a trend I see as someone who supervises a lot of research-based projects. My per personal theory is that the computer has become basically a tool for high-end gaming and word processing. Everything else is done on the phone. I think viewing tasks through the lens of individual apps has taken away some of the general curiosity and ex exploration that was part of the internet experience 10 years ago. And you know what? I think this person's kind of right. Things, um, you know, the internet's different. Yeah. I, really, I gotta find things. I remember the old days of finding dumb sites like friggin' there was this one that was just called flashplayer.com or something like that. <laughs> it was essentially a new ground rip off but we didn't know what Newgrounds was at the time and that's where um, like Denza and I would watch stuff like Final Fantasy Guild Quest and the Decline of Video Gaming I'm pretty sure was on there it, it was straight up like a Newgrounds rip fest wow but um, we had used it for so long and when we originally ran into Newgrounds we thought Newgrounds was the rip fest no nope. we quickly learned otherwise but still Yeah, and then um, another look at it is uh, many modern OSs, especially on mobile, are trying incredibly hard to pretend the file system doesn't exist. I can't tell you how many times I've downloaded something on my phone and wondered, okay, where did it just go? When you choose to download, you get a stupid message that says downloaded. And yes, I checked my pictures in downloads folder. It's not there! Phones like to pretend they're some magical device and not a computer. It's stupid. Yeah. And then, um... This sort of thing is exactly why the upcoming generation seems to be absolutely useless in terms of real computer skills. The Appleification of the devices has made everything so absolutely quote-unquote user-friendly that all the real mechanics that devices are built on are hidden because it's confusing. It's certainly not a bad thing, but it's changing things, absolutely. Particularly among the half generation that got skipped on both sides of this whole thing. They themselves were too old to grow up with computers, but their kids are growing up with iPads, and I think the ability to download apps and watch YouTube in the car means that the kid is some kind of tech genius because they don't understand that either. The fact is, you don't have to teach somebody how a computer works in order to teach them how to use a computer anymore. That's how technology goes. You don't have to teach someone how a car works before teaching them to drive, either. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be that you would hire the 14-year-old down the street to hook up your VCR. Now, you need to hire that same now 35-year-old to connect the Bluetooth in your car. The now 14-year-olds don't have a clue. 28-year-olds mm. willing to connect Bluetooth for food and or beer. I guess. Let me see. 
guess in a sense this this weirdo generation gap is actually a bit helpful if you want to get into IT <laughs> because it means that no one is like around our age group it pretty much means like the people that would come in and replace us likely actually don't have a clue so they're not going to be as interested in it So that's really interesting. So now we go through this again. Yep. I'm not gonna. Act. I'm just. I'm not gonna play through the stage. I'm just gonna show oh, you yeah. what we unlock. So here's Toya. Now, oh. here's the. Here's the. All right. So here's the Belza Loop. Yes. Here's the Costwell. Here's the Granteed. So there's something new that we unlocked by using every mech and getting every ending. Oh. Tell me if you recognize this fourth mech we unlocked. The Vorlan. Do you, do you recognize what it is? It looks very familiar. How about now? Well, wait. Wait, what is that? <laughs> it's like 3.30. How about now? That's not helping. <laughs> I re recognize that it's good. That is the mech that the Templars were using. Oh, really? Yep. That's huh. that's the secret mech you unlock. You unlock a Fury unit that you can use, and it's actually pretty good. It's arguably the best mech in the game, especially once it upgrades. That's good. So, and ours is uh, purple. If you noticed. So it it looks good in purple. It does. So its color scheme makes me think of an Eva unit, actually. <laughs> Maybe that was the inspiration. So, let's select it real quick. You know, this is fine. <laughs> What's up? You know, one time, we had to go research the White House. Many of us instinctively went to whitehouse.com instead of .gov. <laughs> it was a questionable site at the time. They had lots of porn and everything. They were... For some reason, the staff was intent on it being intentional, despite half the class doing it. So it was like, some people were like, this is one of the first things covered in my AP government class in the early 2000s. Never go to whitehouse.com, ever. Oh, where is it? We never got that bit. They just assumed a bunch of 11 year olds in the year 2000 knew extensively about, wanted to seek, and think it's funny to look at porn, male or female. The most porn I'd been exposed to at that time was some hentai I found accidentally while looking up Sailor Moon. Because, you know, it, cover, it covers all the bases, pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah. That said, I might switch out Valor for something else. I don't know. Level of enemy upgrades? 20. Can't do that yet. The highest we've got so far now is 9, which I'll be doing next time. So, yeah. That, oh, and we can choose three more things, so we're gonna go with... Yorimer, oh god. Ultis and Combatware because fuck Seed. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh god, we start off with uh, Zero Armor. Bam. And you know, this is the beginning of the game. So, as as I said, um, that is the end of this, the, the final run of this game. I'll be covering only the round splits and the finale. Uh, in which case, I will also be switching to Friday afternoons for streaming that. Until the finale, right? Yeah, until the finale, in which case it'll go back to being night. So that You'll all know when that happens. We'll give you a point.